Welcome to Losing a Child, Always Andy's Mom. On this podcast, we journey through the devastating experience of the death of a child. Grief is seldom discussed openly in our culture, and the death of a child makes people feel even more uncomfortable. We approach the topic openly and honestly, speaking to people who have lost loved ones and experts who help care for them. Whether you are a parent experiencing loss or someone who wants to support another going through this tragedy, this podcast strives to offer hope and help. Welcome to episode 136 of Losing a Child, Always Sandy's Mom. Here I am starting to cry already. <laughs> so today is a little bit different because I am doing the recording at the time that I normally would do the release. So we're doing it all at once. It's coming out totally unedited. Gwen's helping me because I had such a dream that this would be beautiful and amazing and a wonderful tribute to my son Andy on his 18th birthday and yet it's just been so hard yeah everything's been so hard so I told Gwen last week like this is not coming together like it was supposed to come together like I had all these dreams of it coming together and being polished and a great tribute and whatever and you said doesn't matter. Yeah. It's too <laughs> yeah. yeah. You said it didn't matter. And so I kind of let, and we're letting Gwen kind of run the show a little bit today. So, yeah. um, cause I'm already crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think part of that conversation was me saying to you that I hear from the listeners sometimes who reach out to me and just want to talk about their grief, that they feel like the people who you interview look so together yeah. and they say, I can't relate to that. Like I'm not at that point. And I tell them that, you know, they are at a different stage, but that there are times that we're not together. Oh, and I know. Right now is one of those times for you. <laughs> I, you've used many different words to describe how you felt <laughs> and not just today in the days leading up to today. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And you know, and people don't know too, sometimes before I record, I'm having a really bad day and I'm like <laughs> tearful and I sometimes tear up a little bit more in the episode. But I mean, there are times when I'm crying like an hour before and then I feel like I need to get it together. And mm -hmm. maybe I do a little bit that a little bit too much sometimes, but I feel this pressure that I want to be encouraging. And, right. And because that's the whole point, right? right? The whole point is yeah. to try to offer encouragement and to offer a little bit of light yes. in this darkness. And so I don't want to give people darkness. Right. But it is encouraging. And you have met that goal. But I think when we were talking about today is that we didn't have to pretty this one up for anybody. That for your listeners, just this real raw, this is a really tough time kind of conversation. So, and you um, thought that it felt better than trying to pretend that today you could somehow rally up. Right. I mean, right? like, right. That I felt like I wanted it to be the best one ever. Right. Something. I yes. mean, really, I, that's yeah. what I was trying to push on myself. Right. Was like trying something to, to be over the bigger time. and better. Yeah. And, and just to honor him. And because mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, you know, he deserves it because yeah. he does, but I just can't. Yeah. So, well, and isn't that as moms what we want? You know, if he was here, you would be all about what oh. today was for him. But and know, he loved birthdays. Did he? He just yeah. loved birthdays. And in fact, I have kind of a birthday story about him that I sort of wanted to start with because I know a lot of people are not going to listen to this old arm thing. So, <laughs> so, so I wanted to start with this. And and so Andy loved birthdays. He loved everybody's birthday. He loved his birthday. He almost it didn't even matter whose okay. birthday it was. He just loved it. And so um the day before he died. August 14th, 2018, was his foster brother, Valeriano's birthday. He turned 20. And um, so that day we were like going to go, we wanted to go, we went, did some last minute shopping for some gifts for him. And he went with, to Target with me. And then we went to the Nothing Bunch cake store. And because we always get these cakes and we, Lemon is seemed mm -hmm. to be everybody's favorite cake. It was Andy's favorite cake. And for the first time, Andy went in the store with me. 
And he was just like giddy going in this store. He's like, I've never gotten to go in the store before. And you know, like he's 14. So sometimes he's acting all grown up. And then other times he was still like just a little kid. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. day he was just a little kid, like excited to go to the cake store. I mean, he walked in and he like, they give samples. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and so he had a sample of cake and then we picked up Valeriano's cake and then like when we're walking out of the store, he, I remember so distinctly, he was like almost skipping out of the store Mm -hmm. at 14 years old. He grabbed my hand and he looked at me and he said, this is what Larson's do on their birthday. They eat bunk cake. (laughs) So today I'm having a bunch of little bunk cakes sent to the office and to thank them for being so supportive. And I'm going to have some bunk cakes around here. I think his best friend's coming over and eating a little bunk cake and, so anyway, so if any of you want bunt cake today, <laughs> have a little bunt cake That's in awesome. honor of Andy from the Nothing But yeah. the Cake Store. <laughs> so uh, watch out, bunt cake store. You might be getting a lot of lemon yeah. orders today. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is great. You know, I was thinking in when I'm with people, we talk about, so um, the anniversary of the death, oftentimes we remember back to that day. But with birthdays, it's very natural for moms, even with your, you know, I, my mom still s- recalls the day I was born on my birthday, right? Uh, so yeah. let's do a little bit of that. Tell us a little bit about 18 years ago today, you're becoming <laughs> a mom, you know, did you know ahead of time he was a boy? Let's learn a little bit uh, about that. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny. Well, he was my second. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, I didn't, we did know he was a boy. Um, you did or did? We did. Okay. We did. Yeah. It's funny. We didn't with my first. Uh-huh. And then with the second, we decided to find out because, so I, all my pregnancies, I was like super sick. Okay. So I would throw up every single day of mm. my pregnancies. It was, it was really awful. And so I think we wanted to know, because Eric was like, we want to know if this can be it. <laughs> if, we, if we had a girl and a boy, if we could like <laughs> stop, <laughs> which of course we didn't end up doing anyway, but um. But yeah, so we knew it was a boy and um, the day he was born, actually, I well, it was on his due date. I woke up, oh. I woke up and I was extremely dizzy. Like the room was spinning. It was the middle of the night. The room was spinning horribly. Every time I laid down, the room would spin. Hmm. So I had to stay up and woke up Eric like something is really wrong because as soon as I lay down, everything spins. Um and so we had to, you know, get somebody to watch Katie and he took me in to labor and delivery and I wasn't contracting, wasn't anything. It was just this horrible dizziness and spinning. Oh. And so they were super worried. I had something called an amniotic fluid embolism where oh. amniotic fluid got into my bloodstream up to my brain. And they thought, you know, it mm-hmm. could be really, really bad, but it turns out everything looked fine. But I, but I still couldn't lay down. Like I went in the elevator and I was like vomiting in the elevator and they got me like right in. And, and what was funny too, is that the, it was brand new, opened this brand new labor and delivery board at the university of Iowa. It had just opened. And I was in fact, one of the first women to labor there. And I, in my labor room, the room I ended up laboring in, I didn't go in right away because they were giving a tour to the university of Iowa oh. president and they wanted to put me in the best room. Cause you know, I worked there. Oh, okay. So they waited until the tour was done to put me in. But, but anyway, back to, they do all these tests and I'm of course having to sit up the whole time because as soon as I lay down, I feel like I'm going to throw up. They said, everything's fine. And I thought, I am not leaving this hospital without a baby. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about people leaving AMA. And I was thinking to myself, you know, against medical advice. And I was thinking to myself, if you try to send me home without a baby today, I am staying AMA. I am not going (laughs) home. Is there such a thing? Without a a baby. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And they said, so they said, and this is what's going through my mind. And what they said to me was, we really have no idea what's going on, Marcy, but this is really weird. And we don't think you should go home until you have this baby. So we think we should induce you today. And I thought, Oh, Oh, praise God. I just can't. And so that's what they did. They ended up inducing me and I like kind of labored all day and they thought they were going to have to do a C-section because it turned out he's nine pounds, four ounces. He was a massive baby. And it just was, did not seem like things were coming. And finally they said, we're going to give you another hour. And if, if this isn't, if you don't, finish up mm-hmm. here we're going to um <clears throat> it, we're we're going to have to do a c-section but 
then he must have heard or something because <laughs> he didn't want that. Yeah, he didn't want that, <laughs> and then we ended up having them, and mm -hmm. it was good. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, so that was uh, kind of the day he was born, mm -hmm. and I had this huge baby, and you know, Katie was six pounds and then he was nine pounds and then everybody teased me then that my third one would end up being 12. Right. <laughs> I was six, yes. nine and 12. Fortunately, Andy or Peter was not 12, was yes. eight and a half, but had you named him beforehand? How did you come up with his name? Had it, um, uh, well, you know, what's funny is that my last name was Peterson. So I, I, I really wanted, I wanted a son to be named Peter, but Eric really wanted his name, middle name to be Lee. And um, I, I like Peter Lee sounded to me like an adverb. It sounded right. horrible. Yeah. Peter Lee. <laughs> so that's what I was like, well, Peter is totally out then. And I don't know. I mm -hmm. mean, I don't know how we ended up settling mm -hmm. on, on Andrew Lee, but you know, his middle names after Eric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up having my Peter afterwards, and I could do Peter Thomas, which does not sound like right. an adverb. So. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find yourself right now looking at more of his baby pictures or what well, these last few weeks? What have your thoughts been? Well, it's just been so hard because um, not only is it birthday, but it would be a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. And so that's really huge, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm and towards the end when a lot of big things would be right? happening. Right. So we're yeah. starting to get graduation announcements in the mail. I'm seeing all mm -hmm. those signs like, you know, Forest Hills Northern 2022 graduate, you mm -hmm. know, and then the name. And even though he wouldn't even, that, those are the kids he went to school with. Mm -hmm. he, he was going to be at the aviation academy, but still seeing those signs around the neighborhood and stuff have been oh, yeah. just really hard. It's like a little dagger. Mm -hmm. Every time I see one of those or every time a graduation announcement comes in the mail or any of those things. I mean, I recently, recently got an email from the parents group at his high school where it's supposed mm -hmm. to be because I was never taken off of the class oh. parent list. And so I got a email just telling us, telling us all about the senior party and that everybody needed to turn in their hundred dollars and giving us a rundown and ooh, keep it, keep it a secret from your senior. Cause we don't want them to know, but I want the parents all to know. And mm. oh my gosh, it just, cause I tried to get off of the list. Um, right away you know mm -hmm. a couple times right away the freshman year and then again his sophomore year um i got a list you know an email for parents of all sophomores and i wrote back asking to be taken off but somehow i just am still on that list oh. and, and a lot of times you don't know right because i i have my daughter was two years ahead and my son peter's two years behind and so the whole school emails i'm i was going to always get right, right. Mm -hmm. so that's not surprising. It's just, um, yeah. yeah. Class. So, yeah. so anyway, so then I had to write this email back and I felt really bad because I'm just writing to this parent, but I copied the school on it and I was like, you know, I'm really sorry, but you know, I yeah. really need to be taken off this. I need to protect my heart a little bit because I know there are going to be a lot more because it kind of said in the email, right. like, There'll we'll be a lot more posted. emails, yeah. you know, baccalaureate and graduation mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and, um, which is nice. Then the principal wrote back to me and they, um, they just uh, offered to give Andy an honorary diploma. Oh, because we kind of didn't think they would, right? Because he right. only went to orientation and he was only really yeah. a part of the school for like three weeks you know, on the soccer team and then just orientation and that's it. He never even went to the first day of school because that was his, um, that was the day of his funeral was the mm -hmm. first day of school. So, but it was nice. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to do that. I don't know. I don't know if we'll do it at graduation though. Cause I think that may be too hard. Yeah. Cause they said we could, they could do it privately. So. Yeah. The part about the senior year. So today's his birthday and then, you know, tomorrow's, 
a different day. I'm not saying you're going to forget, but the graduation is a season. Oh yeah, it's, for sure. You know, that's not going away. It's not going away. So those that that is a hard, hard season, and and so I think that awareness, and we've been talking that you could feel like you are really your words, a hot mess, <laughs> sipping back. What's wrong with me, Gwen? You know, these are the things she's been saying to me these last few weeks. And there's nothing wrong with her. This is a really difficult season. And I was thinking about Ginger Wolfish. She founded Camp Anew and her son, Daniel, died, um, I think, the age of 18 or 20, somewhere around that. But she describes these days and seasons. She calls them thumb bumpers. But it's like if you have a wound and then it begins to feel better. But when you bump it again, that throb. Yeah you're in a season of almost every day bumping that and having that throb hit you. Yeah, It's not that same raw numbness that you had. No, the first time. no, it's different. It's different. <laughs> it yes. is different. Cause it doesn't feel numb at all. It just hurts. It hurts. It's that throb. That's the only way to describe it. Yeah. So some of you, um, you know, just hearing this will be helpful but the other piece to keep in mind is that it it happens like you're not regressing. You're just in a season of throbbing. So it's not that you're back to square one. It feels like it. But I know that you're not because when you come out of this season, you'll be in a different place than you were before. Yeah. Yeah, I told you I turned off the clock. I guess not. It's all right, it's a lovely. But time. that's okay. It's my Andy clock, so I mm-hmm. never mind it going off in these anyway. So yeah, um, yeah. Um, so in these last few weeks, let's just talk um, about some of the f- feelings, physically, emotionally, spiritually, that you've kind of gone through. Yeah, it's just overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just is, right? So it's it's and all then, levels that it's affected. It's it's yeah, it really truly is all mm-hmm. levels that's affected me, yeah. and even to the point where um, you know this, but no one else knows this. I got COVID. Even like, right, uh, we went away on this spring break trip, which that's always hard too, right? To go on vacation. Yeah. And so we went on a little spring break trip, and Peter just wanted to go golfing, and so we decided we're going to go down to. Down to down to Arkansas, and then I went to an event that that I'll talk about in an episode coming up here. But anyway, mm-hmm. I ended up getting COVID, right? And um, and I didn't even know it, but in some ways, it ended up not being necessarily a really horrible thing. I mean, I I was feeling pretty cruddy on vacation, and we, you know, we're trying to like do some hikes, mm-hmm. and I couldn't do it, and then I was, I mean, clearly, I know why I couldn't do mm-hmm. it because I couldn't breathe, but. So I came back and I had tested myself with an at-home test like a couple days into the illness and it was negative. And so I thought it wasn't COVID. And then I go into the office and we get tested right away. And sure enough, it is COVID. And so then I'm sent home. And that was like kind of, I don't know if it was good, if it was bad. I think it was sort of both in mm-hmm. a way, right? Because mm-hmm. I came back from this vacation and I just kept thinking, okay, I got to get through this week. And the next week is Andy's birthday. Mm-hmm. And it was just like this, uh, just on top of me right and i'm putting all this pressure that i need to do this podcast and i need to do all this stuff and i need to get ready and um and then and then i just had COVID, and i couldn't do really anything and then mm-hmm. i'm at home and 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 i was crying every day and last week i cried every day and so mm-hmm. i felt like in some ways it would have been an emotional basket case to even be at work so it was kind of good that i couldn't be there but then on the other hand, I don't know that the isolation was awesome either. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but you did some good things. But let's go back to something in the fact that, you know, our immune system is down when we're grieving. So again, you said to me, after all this time now, two I years, have COVID. Two yeah. years. I see COVID like every, right. almost every day in the office. I'm seeing yes. somebody with COVID. And obviously, you know, yeah, protection on. But right. still, yeah. two years in and right. now I get COVID. Yeah. I mean, so, it you know, physically. Maybe you weren't aware of the anticipation and how that was draining you. Yeah. And then you're more open. I, I don't know. I'm not a, you know. Yeah. But 
it does affect us physically and kind of set us back a little bit, but that time to rest. And one of the other things is you're very involved. I mean, doing the podcast supporting you, um, lead the virtual group at starlight. And one of the things that you and I talked about in the last couple of weeks is, um, you're back to the point where you're leading, right? right. But then in these few weeks, leading was something that seemed overwhelming. Yeah. So talking about, and I just want to give the listeners that encouragement that it, again, doesn't mean we failed. You're, you, but we have to kind of, you know, tweak it a little bit, what it looks like during these times when we're overwhelmed, yeah. as your words, that you just kind of have to step back or just say, I need a day. I need that. So, um, right. And at last week, I'm like, I don't know that I can do it. The right. leading this virtual support group. I, I talked to Stephanie from Starlight. I said, I don't, I don't know that I can yeah. do it today. And because I just, I don't know that I, that I can't. And I said, the problem though, is I need it. Right. Yeah. We were talking like about I needed the, the support. Need, yeah. <laughs> but I just didn't know if I could lead it. Mm -hmm. And so we had this whole conversation about kind of what to do about that. And because there was really no one else to do it. So it was kind of like, well, you cancel it or you lead it as you can. Yeah. And that's what we kind of settled on. Uh -huh. Like if I really can't lead it very much and we just are just together. Yeah. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. And it it was a lot less pressure. And, you know, normally we get together kind of as leaders, I, me virtually, obviously before and after. And I said, I can't do that. She said, fine. Yeah. yeah, totally fine. So you, you don't need to do that. And, but I felt like I could be vulnerable with my group, right? which was good. And you found support there. And I did. And yes. I felt better. I felt better at the end, even though like in the day I was mm -hmm. talking to you, I was talking to Stephanie, yeah. I was like really worried about right. how this was going to go. Yeah. But what I love about it, what I say, um, it just being real, being real in that. And, and people appreciate that. If you had gone in trying to pretend that you yeah, were I didn't at all. Yeah. But I just said honest... today is bad. Like yeah. today is bad yeah. and we're going to just get through how we can get yeah. through. And I'm really sorry. Yeah. And you know what? We made it through everything. Mm -hmm. I even read everything I was supposed to which I did this week too, although I was sobbing through the whole thing. I was almost crying more this week than I was last week, just because it's just emotional. Yes. It's just, but then I felt more okay about it too, because, well, they saw me last week. <laughs> right. That, that I can do this and we can walk and it it's where you're not, um, you know, how am I going to say this? This word we use walk beside people. So if you felt that you in leadership had to go in and pull these people and your job was to take them through, you couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But walking beside means that they can help you too. And that's that wonderful value of a peer led and that you didn't, you could just be right in with them and walk yeah. beside and we're in this together. And I, I feel the same way in your honesty with, with this particular episode too. Um, and all of your episodes really, cause you don't, you're not coming across as the expert you are, you know, walking with parents in that. And so I hope that gives the listener that um, encouragement to not wear the phony face or not feel like you have to put on and pretend. Now you mentioned the word protecting your heart. I just want to say that there are times and around certain people and in certain places that we do have to protect our heart by pretending. Mm -hmm. But with your listeners, with the support group, with your friends, with your family, if you felt like you had to pretend with them too, it's too exhausting. It's, yeah. It's yeah. I couldn't. Your feeling. I can't yeah. pretend with them. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. couldn't do it. Yeah. 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 And because, you know, I'm already having to pretend at work and, and things like that. Right. And, and so I, I got through work this week, um, uh -huh. which was good. I mean, and I'm glad. In anticipation of today, you had taken the day off ahead yes, of time. Yes. Because yes. one of the things that I tell people when they ask me, what should I do on those days to go to work and pretend like it's any other day is too hard. And yeah. even though you don't know what you might do at home, you're more open to whatever you feel you can handle than if people put themselves in a spot that I have to go to work. Yeah. So I remember being at work on the one year anniversary, my college roommate died when we were in college. And I remember being um, in at work thinking I'm a bereavement person. I can handle this. I spent yeah. the whole day in the bathroom crying. You know, <laughs> I, I was no good to anyone. Yeah. 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 And, and I, yeah, 
<laughs> I mean, I, I just took today off. I worked Tuesday instead of Thursday. And then of course, you know, people are asking, why are you Tuesday? And I'm like, well, because Thursday yeah. can be not good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but anyway, yeah. it was, it was good. And yet I'm honoring him at work today too. Cause I sent the cupcake. Right. Instead of the well, cakes. Let's talk about honoring. You wanted to have a tribute and some things. So you have yeah. some beautiful things and we're going to see how that yeah, plays we're out gonna see how you. that plays right. out. Exactly. So yeah, it's hard to know what to start with. Um, I guess I can start. We'll start with. So Eric's parents wrote a little um wrote a little email like 10 days ago now of just about just about Andy. So mm -hmm. I'll read that one first. Is short, so I think I can read it. And okay. I don't know that I can read them all. Okay, so it said, Hello, Marcy, we are down in Florida reading your message uh, to all who knew Andy. Words cannot convey what we both thought about and remember about our dear Andy, but we will try. Peach, that's my mo <laughs> mother in law, and she goes by Peach, was <laughs> thinking about a time that we were out on the deck at the lake. When everyone was up north with us, she heard some musical singing inside and thought it was the radio playing. She got up to go inside to turn off the radio when she realized it was Andy singing. Mm. Such beautiful singing. For myself, I think about him almost every day, and I am like you, wondering what he would be like today. Handsome, strong, and full of life. Hey, Grandpa, how's it going as he would burst into the house? Or, hey, Grandpa, this is no dump as he entered our condo down in Florida. <laughs> I can go on and on, but the tears are flowing. He will never be forgotten as long as we are alive. God bless his soul. Grandma and Grandpa. Mm, that was beautiful. Yeah. So funny because I showed it to Eric and he's like, just when I think I know my dad, he goes and writes something like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that was kind beautiful. of a beautiful thing. Well, and and the voice. I mean, I've heard his voice, but the the fact that you know, Grandma thought it was the radio. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's... I know. I and I feel like I knew. I want to talk about that a tiny bit too because mm -hmm. I recently interviewed somebody, and they asked me after we're done recording. They said. That song that's at the end of your end of your podcast every week. Is, is that your son singing? And and I said, yeah. And then I told her the whole story. And I realized, you know, I started this podcast two and a half years ago. And I said the story of that singing then, but I've never said it since. Right. So new listeners don't know. So new listeners don't know. So if you didn't go back and listen to episode one, you don't know. The story of that song because it's it's a very precious story to me so yeah so it was um right before the christmas concert of 2017 so the year before he died um he was um in middle school and his middle school band concert was that night plus they had the dress rehearsal for the grand Rapids choir boys choir men and boys and so he had to go directly from this dress rehearsal to his band concert so he was kind of dressed up and i'm all dressed up and then i had to go and sit through the rehearsal because he had to leave early oh right okay, yeah and so they had sang that song so it's away in the manger and they sang that song and probably a little bit earlier because he was going to have to be leaving early and he couldn't be through the for the entire dress rehearsal and so that's he sang the third verse was his solo and um they start singing it and i knew he had the solo but i'd never heard him sing it mm -hmm. ever and i'd never i heard him sing some solo parts but usually it's when it's like a part but the whole choir is also singing mm -hmm. and so you can sort of pick it out but it's not like really featuring him because in this one, if you listen, the rest of the men and boys are just humming. So it's just Andy singing. And it's the rest of it is a hum. Mm -hmm. And um, so he started singing that solo. And I was blown away. I'm like, oh, my word. Oh. That is, sounds amazing. Yeah. And so I started, like, fiddling with my phone and thinking, I got to record this. This is really good. And so I started recording. And they got to the end and, you know, the director, Scott, cut them off and said, Andy, that was perfection. 
Aww. And then he turned to me and he said, did you get all that mom? And I said, no, actually, I just got like the last 16 seconds of it or 17 seconds. And he looked back at Andy and he said, well, sounds like we're going to have to do it again, Andy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they sang the whole thing again, just so I could record it. So it was just for me. Yeah. So that's what makes that recording extra special. So much so. Because it wasn't sung for everybody. It wasn't sung for the dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. It was sung for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and after he died, you know, I... I put that, I posted that to Facebook and we had like a mm -hmm. hundred thousand likes on it mm -hmm. on Facebook. We all sang the last verse of Away in the Manger at, at the reception of Andy's funeral. It, his funeral ended with that recording of him singing it because if you listen to the words, it's about going to heaven. Yeah. So, I mean, it couldn't have been a better solo to have gotten I mean, of all the solos at Christmas, there's one about getting ready to go to heaven. And it's that one. Right. So yeah. it was pretty special. And I feel like I really needed to tell people that because a lot of people don't know. Right. Because <laughs> I've told it one time. So. And I would just say today, it will be at the end of the episode, right? Like normal, the close out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It just, will be just yeah. that. And it will have a different meaning for your listeners today that didn't know the story and that just taking the time to listen and just have a moment, not just for you and Andy, but for all the parents and their kids yeah. to have that moment. Yeah. yeah. It's not it's just, just for me for anymore. Yeah, it's right. Not, it's not just I need for a me. Tissue now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and then the other thing, too, that we have today that I haven't listened to, but you have. I did. I did. Is that um, I talked to Scott of the choir, mm -hmm. and I um, asked if he could have the men and boys sing Happy Birthday, which he did. He got up them all to do that, and then he sent me the link last week, and then I couldn't listen to it because... I just couldn't listen to it. So I don't know if we, do you want to do that now since we're talking sure, about the choir? Sure. It so is beautiful. we can see if I can, I got to try to find that now because I okay. didn't get that ready unless you've got it ready. <laughs> no, I do not. Okay. I, I didn't think about it, but um, I've got it right here. Okay. Otherwise I could read something else. <sighs> oh yeah. You, you want to read something else? Okay. You and read something else from, this is from my aunt Penny who listens okay. all the time. So well, she's looking for that. This is what Aunt Penny said. The word that describes Andy best for me is excited. He just couldn't wait. When it came to visit, the energy in the house just completely changed. He loved my juicer. Really, a juicer? How exciting could that be? But to Andy, it was amazing. <laughs> Playing cards and board games always went to a new level too. Difficult for him to sit and play. He always <laughs> stood, it seemed like. He did. He did. Oh, I can see it. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was his sensitive side, sitting real close to me, watching a movie or a ball game, laughing and or crying. Just a unique, amazing, beautiful boy. I could never forget him. Happy heavenly birthday, Andy. Love your great Aunt Penny. Okay. And so I'm at this recording now, so let's see how this goes. We'll put it up to the microphone here and I will be watching too. I think we'll try to post it later too is the whole mm -hmm. thing. It was, was wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And there was a, there's just a richness. I don't know. When I listened to it, that was the only word that just kept coming to me. Not, it wasn't sorrow and it wasn't the happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, it didn't yeah. have that little, it just had a richness to it. Yeah. It just really did. Yeah. I will make sure to post that up so you can see the video too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's more than just the audio part. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, 
here, you know what? I've got some other little things too. So, okay. um, uh, my husband's sister sent um, a message and then Eric recorded something too. And I don't, e I haven't even listened to it yet. So we're going to do, we're going to do <laughs> Eric's sister first. So this is Aunt Amy. Happy 18th birthday, Andy. This is your Aunt Amy. And as it has every year, it feels hard to say happy birthday because it's hard for us. But the message of happy birthday is always for the person with the birthday to find joy in their day, no matter how they're feeling and where they're at. So we are all, me and Uncle Bob, and your cousins, Nathan and Addie, are wishing you a happy birthday, and we miss you very, very much. We do every day, and some of our favorite memories, um, playing baseball, knowing you're watching us arrive on ways, knowing you're watching Addie play softball on Game Changer. We love tubing, watching you tube. We love and miss how you eat pancakes with such gusto. <laughs> and I'm sure you still are. And we think of you every time we see a rainbow because when we drove home from Grand Rapids after your funeral, there was a double rainbow over the freeway for us. So we always think of you when we see rainbows. We think of you when birds visit, when we're swimming at the pool and knowing you're with us. We miss you, miss you, miss you. We wish that your 18th birthday was different but we don't get to make those decisions out of our hands, but we know you're happy somewhere and that makes us feel better. So happy birthday, Andy. We love you very much and enjoy adulthood. So anyway, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm, I'm in amaze that you are, you've been vulnerable and honest this whole time. But listening to these things for the first time in front of others is really. Um, I listened to this one. I oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I to this one. this I said, is like, wow. No, I you know, this is a level of, I mean, it's really today become a support group and um, a beautiful, holy space. I mean, you know, it's yeah. just amazing. Yeah. yeah. So um, the next thing is maybe we can read, uh, you can read the sure. message sent from um the mom of Andy's best friend and oh. um it was it was written by his best friend Ioni and oh. um there's no way I can read it so no I'm okay. just gonna let you do it yeah Andy and his family taught me many things growing up around him but some of the memories that stick with me the most are the memories of going with Andy and his family to their cottage I have very fond memories of going there with them and I can describe these trips as some of the best childhood memories growing up. Some of them include playing soccer in the basement. And all you could hear at times were the screams of Andy, Peter, and I going crazy after we scored what we thought were the craziest goals in between the goalposts that were made up by using pillows and blankets. <laughs> A few others included the whole family and I playing Mario Kart on the Wii every morning. I have to say they were the best Mario Kart players around. And every time I went up to the cottage was another chance for me to get good enough to finally beat them. But the memory that stuck with me the most was learning how to water ski. I had never heard of or seen anyone look as though they were floating on water with skis before. And the first person to show me what that looked like was Andy. He looked so graceful doing it. It seemed easy and effortless. And let me tell you, it was not. And I can guarantee you, I fell on my face way too many times when I first tried it. Uh -huh. But the thing I will always remember from Andy and this first experience of mine was how he was my biggest supporter. Watching him get up on the water skis was just inspiring. And I wanted to be just like him because at a young age, I thought he was the best of the best among water skiers. But after failing many times and not coming anywhere close to the successful made me want to stop and go back inside the boat. But he was the one encouraging me to keep going. He was the one to keep cheering me on after falling on my face. He was the one who would tell me to keep trying. 
When I finally got up, I couldn't tell you how happy I was to finally do it. But the person who was even happier for me was Andy. I got up and I saw the whole family cheering for me, even though I was only up for five seconds. <laughs> um, but I could see Andy screaming and his face was lit with the widest smile. And he was my number one supporter. And he was more excited for me passing the adversity of getting up on water skis than I was. That's what I'll always remember about Andy the most. He always wanted my best for everything I did. And he always had the biggest smile on his face when he was there to see me succeed. He was my best friend and the best friend anyone could ever ask for. Andy, I missed you so much. You are not forgotten. And I will always have you in my heart. Happy 18th birthday, bud. I know you are still smiling. Wow. What a special young man. You know. Yeah, I remember that day so specifically. I bet you do. He just kept falling and falling and falling and falling. <laughs> and so wanted to give up. I mean, this kid just uh -huh. so wanted to give up. And Andy just would not let him give up. He just he just believed in him yeah. so much that he just kept encouraging him. And I started to feel a little sorry for him. And poor Yoni was so sore the next day. He doesn't remember <laughs> that, but he was. Well, he didn't talk about that. He barely walked the next day because he was so sore. Yeah. But, but he finally did it. And I thought, oh. Thank you. I'm so glad he did because they were both so happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm catching today? I've heard a lot about Andy since the day I first met you. What I'm catching today is just even being able to envision his excite his excitement. Yeah. You know, and when you know the aunt talked about him standing up to play a game, <laughs> we all can see that. Like yeah. you know that I can't even sit down. This is going to be so good. And then you know, for that friend. To have that memory of someone truly being happy for you. Yeah. He really will carry that into probably his future work and, you know, teams that he's on and all of that. Well, I mean, we can go back to even when, so those boys ended up going to different high schools because uh, Yoni stayed on and, and was going to Northern High School. And, and Andy, of course, went to the Aviation Academy. And so they both, they played soccer together. And Andy, of course, never had started. He was always one of the last ones on the team. And and um, Yoni was always way better. But so they both tried out for their JV soccer team. And I just remember Andy being like, well, Yoni's going to make the team. Yoni's awesome. He's mm -hmm. amazing. He's so good. And Yoni did not have confidence that he was going to make this team for sure. Mm -hmm. And when Yoni made the team, because he only made the team the week before Andy made his team, okay. just because the tryouts were different times. And um. And he was so over the top, excited for him, but also fully expected it. You know, he's like, right. well, not surprised. You know, he's yeah. awesome. I mean, yeah. He's going to be, he's going to be great. He's going to be in for sure. But he was, you know, as excited he was as he was for himself making it the next week. I know, I know that if he had to pick one of those boys to have made the team, he would have picked his friend. Yeah. He would yeah. have picked Yoni over him. Every single time, if you would have asked, okay, Andy, only one of you is going to make it the soccer team this year. You want it to be you yeah. or you want it to be Yoni? You would have been Yoni all about yeah. it. Oh, you know what I mean? I do yeah. because I can just hear, you know, he's so good. I mean, like he believed in him. <laughs> yeah. 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 He did. Yeah. That's awesome. Cause another friend might've been like, you know what? Maybe you're not meant to water ski. You <laughs> get back in the boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, well, um, here, so Eric also did a little recording, and I am going to play this, and I haven't heard this yet, so I, um, we're going to see what this is, so here we go. Oh, I can't hear it. No. Is there any way you can I don't know if there's a way to put make it, it on bigger. an external speaker? Oh goodness. So it's raised to listen. And this is why I should have listened to it ahead of time, but I didn't mm, want to listen to it right. ahead of time. Okay, here we go. This I think is gonna be better. Okay. Hey Andy, this is your dad. It's been a long time since we talked. <laughs> uh, your mom has done some pretty amazing things and she started this great healing podcast, which I've been so proud of her. 
I just, I know you are too. It's really hard thinking that tomorrow you're going to be 18 or should be 18. Miss you so much, of course. Especially miss your laugh and coming up and hugging me and silly things you used to say. I'm sure you the 18 year old pretty silly. I know I have times <laughs> too, so thank you. Got that for me. Our family's still broken ways we've healed in others. I'm probably most upset about things that I'm a better person in so many ways, a better physician, maybe a better dad, better husband, certainly a better person because I've had to go through life without you. It makes me upset because you don't want something terrible to happen to make you better. Uh, but I feel like that's sort of what has happened. <laughs> Not something that you know, it seeks out, obviously, but I guess I've learned with you being gone that I'm stronger than I thought. And we all are a little stronger than we thought. And at the same time, we're more vulnerable than we realize that things you think are constant, things that are you're sure of, you're not so sure of anymore. And they're no. Oh, sorry. I'm apologizing to Eric, and he's not even here, but I let my phone go. <laughs> okay. All right. Oops. Let's see. It's really hard about what it'd be like if you're there. Whether it was us out, just having dinner, maybe doing something that's kind of boring as just a car ride or golfing, <laughs> going to basketball games or whatever. Uh, every time you're not there, your absence is so present and it's so hard to accept that you're not there when you should be and all the things we should be doing and getting ready for it this year and right now you'd be just about done with high school because you definitely have the senior slide <laughs> probably have your college plans picked out imagine you have a pilot's license i don't know but mm -hmm. All these things that should have happened, uh, it didn't. <laughs> Just serving as a lesson to me that things you can expect to happen don't. And you have to accept that, which is hard because we like to think we have more control over the, our lives and our world than probably we do. And it's not fair and it's not right that we're forced to change. And even gone has been the biggest change in my life. And I hope, hope it made you proud. I've been trying to keep things together. I've been trying to honor you, I remember you. I always miss you. I'm sure you're glad to know that we're getting by. <laughs> we're able to laugh. Uh, I just have a lot of trouble watching shows where someone dies <laughs> because it always reminds me of you, obviously. Even if it's not a kid, it's just someone else. And I feel like it's all types of things because the reason grief hurts so much is because we loved you so much. I didn't love you. I wouldn't be sad. That's the cost of, I guess, love is that there's loss. That's what makes it so hard, but it's so worthwhile. I miss you, buddy. Happy birthday. I guess I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Um, 
Because <laughs> I had to hurt that. Yeah. Had you talked this morning with him about Andy's birthday or no? Um, not much this morning. We talked yeah. a little bit last night. Okay. We did. We talked a little last night. Yeah. I I wrote down a couple things that he said that were so key. Um, he said, um, we're broken, but healing. Or still broken, but healing. Wow. You know, I think that is just says it all doesn't yeah. it yeah. you know we are healing and you do have better eggs and and um like i said when you come up from this one you'll be in a different spot this is that roller coaster of grief you're down in that valley um but yeah it's still broken i yeah. mean it, it's not magically gone away and that you're just opening up a little piece it's it's a part of you every day yeah yeah and yeah. we certainly do feel like a pretty broken family. Yeah, sure. right. Um, and the fact when he said, I always miss you, uh, that's just a feeling that stays. I mean, that's just a part of your makeup now. Yeah. Right? Right. But. Yeah. Um, I have one thought is, what are you doing today? What does the rest of your day look like? You know, this isn't. You had other things planned for today. Uh, yeah. You have to be a mom in between. I do. Yeah. I have to take my son to an appointment, which yeah. I'm not excited about. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm I'm going to see a friend of mine. I'm I think I'm going to go out and see um, go out to Starlight and, and visit with Stephanie a little bit. Um, today at four fifteen, we are going up in an airplane. Actually, mm -hmm. so. Um, some people that we know. Uh, I know I was in Bible study with her and um, and he was in Bible study with Eric, but he was a children's leader and taught all three of my kids, mm. BSF, all three of them. And um, so they knew that Andy wanted to be a pilot. Um, we, we saw them at the West Michigan Aviation Academy Gala the year after he died um, and talked about that, about his dreams to be a pilot. And so he they remembered that. And that he should be a pilot by now, right? Pretty much all the seniors have done their solo. Okay. Um, and if, if they are going to be a pilot, I mean, not everybody becomes a right. pilot. It's just usually about a dozen or so okay. in a class. But, you know, if, if everything went according to plan, he would be a pilot by now. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to take us up in their little airplane. Yeah. Um, just to honor him. Oh. And they asked, is there anywhere we want to go? And I said, not, not really. I just, just to be in the air where he wanted to be. Right. Um, yeah. It would be a lot. So that's happening. Uh, you know, you said at the beginning, like you wanted to make today over the top. That that's pretty over the top. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. And, and then I, Peter, interestingly, has his first um, golf match, his first varsity golf match. We helped to create a uh, Aviation Academy golf team last year. We made it just a club last year. Eric and I kind of helped start it. Um, and a little bit because, you know, Andy and Peter both love to play golf together. And so that had been the plan. The plan had been to make okay. a golf team and um, start a golf team. And so this is the first this is the first varsity match is today. So wow. Peter's first varsity match is today on Andy's birthday wow. all day. So wow. we're going to, Eric and I are going to be up in that airplane. <laughs> so right. we're not going to be at the match, but in some ways I think it's kind of good. Yeah. Um, and I feel like Andy will be with Peter today. Mm -hmm. I feel like he may golf for yeah. a little extra <laughs> well today. Oh. So we'll see how he if does. Not, but I feel like fun. he will. Yeah. He will have fun. But I feel like he's going to have a little extra cheerleader um, After there. that, is there any family dinner? Eating I think his so. Favorite foods? You don't know yet. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> We're waiting. I know, that, I know that Valeriano's coming over. His, his foster son is coming yeah. over. And, and they'll be called to his sister. And yeah. Um, and I, I think we're doing a little dinner. I just don't know. I, right. I, honestly, this was a lot. This was a lot. And yeah. then the airplane thing. And then <laughs> however else yeah. everything I, falls, it falls. Yeah. Um, so mm. we, yeah. Um, I'm going to do this one. 
you know, I am going to write. So this is this is another little card that I got in the mail the other day. And we were just talking about BSF. So I'm going to mention this because this is a Carrie. Carrie spoke at Andy's funeral, actually, and mm -hmm. was his BSF leader, Bible study leader for two years, I think. Um, so I just wanted to read this little thing. And then there's one more um, email that I got from um, man in the choir that's really powerful that I kind of feel like we should end with. Okay. Um, so here's this little note. So I'm thinking about Andy and his upcoming 18th birthday. I made a card with a verse that I think is so perfect when reflecting on his life. On his life, he definitely let his light shine. So it's about a light shining through. I remember how excited he was to share Jesus with his friend from school. That friend was Yoni, of course. <laughs> And his excitement for your family to share God's love with Valeriano before he even arrived in the United States. And his 1,000 watt smile and his laughter, silliness, and enjoyment of things like acting out the Bible lesson in class using a British accent <laughs> during basic truth time. Those are all memories that I will treasure. So anyway, I thank, thank Carrie for doing that. And she's always so good to send me little things. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful expression. So. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so why don't we end, okay. end with this? And there, I cannot read this. But okay. this is from um, a man that's in the choir. His name is Kurt. And his son was in the choir with Andy also. His name was Ian. And so... Um, Anyway, I I just want okay. you to read it. He said, Kurt Day here from GRCMB. <laughs> I don't know if you remember me and my son Ian or not, but assured we have never forgotten your Andy and the time spent with him in the choir and the positive role model he set for all the boys as a musician and a leader. I just read your Facebook post about your upcoming podcast in honor of Andy's 18th birthday and was finally moved to write this email that I've been contemplating for far too long. I've been catching up on your podcast and just listened to Hudson's mom describing how she and you have no new memories of your boys. I also recently keyed in on a couple of other themes, those being grief dreams and not seeing your boys grow up to be a man. Those things all touched me deeply, so I wanted to reach out. After my mom died in 2007, I began feeling guilt about never having dreamt about her. Your podcast assured me I was not alone. Then just a couple of years ago, I had a very vivid grief dream about her. She was standing in a narrow hallway, dressed in white, looking very much as she did in her prime in the 1960s. The walls were of a pink alabaster, and there was a br brilliant white light shining on her from the left. She looked at me and smiled and said nothing. A few seconds later, a friend of our family who had died a couple years after my mom entered the hallway from her right, he too looking as he did in his prime. He took her arm and said, come on, Anne, we don't want to be late for the feast. Then they walked together towards the light. I never doubted their souls were safe and in the hands of Jesus, but this little glimpse afforded me a reminder. Not too long after that amazing experience, it happened again. Just a little background here would help. I'm an avid aviation nut, and when I found out Andy was too, we had a couple of brief conversations about where he was going to school and him wanting to be a pilot. He was so excited to, the avi to go to the aviation academy. Fast forward to a very vivid dream where I was disembarking from a flight aboard United Airlines and a captain was greeting the passengers as we passed by the cockpit. I thought I recognized the captain and when I looked at his nameplate, it read A. Larson. Andy had grown up all the way and now he was a captain of a ship. He looked like you might have expected Andy to look as a grown up with a serious case of a baby face. <laughs> Um, and oh, my tears, I can't even read. Um, and sporting a mustache of all things. Our eyes locked knowingly. He smiled his unmistakable grin. And I asked, how is it to fly an Airbus opposed to a Boeing? To which he replied, it takes him getting accustomed to. Can you imagine of all the things I could have asked? When I think about it, I just had to laugh. 
Andy and my mom share April 21st as their birthdays. Entirely different experiences, but each powerful in its own way and uniquely reassuring. The value of your mission to bring hope and healing and education, in my case, cannot be overstated. Please know that Andy and your entire family are always remembered. Grace and peace. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could see them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm thinking that we had a grown up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the, I mean, there's so many bites about this, yeah. but we're so futuristic. And when we have children, we have so many hopes and dreams. Yeah. Um, um, the key here in thinking about that Andy already knew what if he was going to grow up what he wanted to be a lot of people maybe have a child die they don't know what they want to be so today when you're up in that plane you can envision how much he would have loved that and where he would be at some people don't know that yeah. and have that um, you know knowing what they would dream about doing uh, well Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I really appreciate you yeah. kind of helping me out today because yeah. this and is just too much. Uh, you know, I don't ask for comments from people, but <laughs> let's comment to Marcy because she did a beautiful tribute to an amazing, amazing son today. Happy 18th birthday. And Thanks. I do appreciate it. I've been reading all these wonderful comments and I do appreciate them all. Yeah. So thank you for writing. Yeah. Your vulnerability today. And being brave to show someone who you really are um, was one of the most amazing things you could have done for your son today. So I thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for listening. If you found this helpful and would like to support the podcast, please leave a five-star rating and comment. To help financially, you can text Andy's Mom to the number 53555 or visit the donate page on andysmom.com. Your donations are secure and tax deductible, and we are now able to accept Venmo, PayPal, and Apple Pay. Always Andy's Mom is a registered 501c3 organization and can receive donations through smile.amazon.com, Thrive in Financial, and Benevity, amongst others. Marcy loves hearing from listeners. Please feel free to reach out to her via email at marcy at andysmom.com. Also, be sure to sign up for the email list to receive weekly updates as well as pictures of all of Marcy's guests and their children. Together, let's work to inspire hope one day at a time.